this is my killer tier list as of patch 6.1.0. Uh, this includes all the mid chapter changes that just came out, uh, all the perky works and the base kit changes. Um, I'm going to try and keep this one short. I'm, I've done so many tier lists. Um, most of my reasoning for the placements are still the same, so I will try to brush over a fair few of these killers. Um, as usual, uh, you know the criteria uh, will be a good killer player against four good survivors on a fairly average map, uh, such as you know Ironworks, Coltar, Wreckers Yard, Azeroth, something like that. Uh, there's no point in judging killers based off their bad maps or you know really good maps for them. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Um, oh yeah, add-ons. Um, I will consider all add-ons, but I will not consider add-ons that make the killer much stronger than they normally are. For example, Pinky Finger on Clown makes him way stronger than he usually is. Uh, Mother Dart Ring on Spirit makes her much stronger than she usually is. But, you know, something like Field Recorder on Dredge makes him a lot stronger, but I don't think it makes him so strong to the point where I won't even consider it. So we'll just start at the bottom and work our way up to the top here. I think at the minute the worst killer in the game is probably on most maps the Onrail. Um, and that's just because she basically poses absolutely no threat to the survivors at any time. Um, I knew you could probably put on a ring drawing and the add-on that makes survivors you know, start with a tape and maybe try to get someone condemned and all. But that's not even going to work against good survivors because a good team will be able to coordinate uh, you know, body blocks for the person who's... Uh, about to be condemned i know you can pass through them but if they body block the tv uh, the person can very easily put in a tape and get rid of about four stacks of condemned uh, which there's zero chance that you get someone condemned and then they lose four stacks and you manage to recondemn them you would need so much time for that and it's not going to happen um generally as the honor you, you know you start the match your power's on cooldown so you can't immediately get pressure um, you have stealth, but it's not good. You know, it's very easy to tell when an honor is coming to you, uh, because the, of the lullaby. Um, she gets no actual real on either. Uh, the little phasing in and out, uh, is basically useless. It's going to help you in an already unsafe pallet, but at that point, basically every killer can get a hit there. Um, her powers on a such a long cooldown. It's like a hundred seconds per TV. If survivors can switch TVs off. There's just so much they can do to counter your already weak par. And that being said, even though she's the weakest in the game, you know, you still have a chance against, you know, some uncoordinated survivors. So I think in the current state of Dead by Daylight, especially with the recent changes, uh, the worst killer in the game isn't that bad. Um, unless you're against, you know, really good survivors, but that's besides the point. Uh, next is Trapper, who I think is slightly better just because... Um, you do have a chance to snowball with Trapper. If you get lucky, uh, you might have someone on the hook, uh, catch someone in a trap, down them, maybe someone else steps in a trap while trying to unhook the first guy, and then, you know, put you in a really good spot. Uh, he can defend basement really well, stuff like that. Uh, but generally, Trapper will be really bad. Uh, you will spend the first minute of a match setting up traps, and if a survivor sees you place a trap, which is highly likely, that trap is now completely useless, especially if it's a survival friend, because they can just call it out. You know, if someone sees you place a trap, they say, hey, killer placed a trap, uh, left of killer shack, uh, be aware of that. They don't even have to disarm it, they can just call out to their team if, if it's a survival friend. You know, and I think that's why Trapper is, is really bad, and kind of always will be, um, as, as I was calm during the game. But, you know, that, that's that's fine. Uh, the game has to have weak killers, and I think Trapper's just always going to be one of them. Uh, the next is Pig, who I've moved up a little bit, uh, just because with the, the little RNG changes to her, uh, you can buy yourself a fair amount of time now. Uh, you just have to kind of get lucky still. Um, you know, if you really need someone to, you know, waste a ton of time uh, and get it off on their fourth try, it's now guaranteed that at least one survivor will have to search the box four times. Um, however, you're still just a really bad killer, um, outside of that, you know, you have virtually zero on either ability, uh, your stealth ability is terrible, you have no snowball, no mobility, no nothing, uh, so, against some good loopers, against people who are, you know, have a wee bit of coordination, you should still just basically lose the game, uh, without much you can do about it. Then we have the Nightmare, who just feels like he gets worse with every update, um, Freddy is really bad. Uh, you have to be asleep to be affected by his dream snares. 
and even when you are affected by them, they're, they're just a worse version of Clown's Balls. And then he has a Gen Teleport, which is outclassed by a lot of other killers' mobility. It's on quite a long cooldown. There really just doesn't feel like much Freddy do, uh, can do. So spend most of the game just feeling like a basic M1 killer who just goes around chasing survivors for minutes at a time, occasionally teleporting to a generator, and just going on more M1 chases. No snowball, no nothing. Uh, so he's really weak. I can definitely use a lot of buffs. Uh, next is the shape, um, who I think benefits uh, quite a bit from the recent changes. You know, the faster cooldown, basic attacks, and the fa uh, faster pallet breaking speed. It definitely helps them because if you're using brutal strength and you're in tier three, uh, people who generally pre-drop pallets uh, to avoid you in tier three are punished quite heavily because they don't make much distance from them. Um, he still has all the issues. He usually has so. Uh, sent, uh, spending a ton of time setting up, you know, to try and get to tier 3. Uh, when you're in tier 3, you're still not much of a threat. Uh, because, you know, uh, if you told me to last a minute in a chase against the tier 3 Myers, or last a minute in a chase versus, like, a Blight, I would 100% say, uh, let, let the Myers chase me. Because you can still just draw pallets and play Windows normally. He just has a long lunge. Uh, he can still snowball a bit. He's got a bit of stealth going for him. Uh, you, you, know, you can pop tier 3 right when you're behind someone and basically just negate that entire chase. Uh, but you will struggle quite a bit, especially against uh, Vigilant Survivors. And ending the D tier is Legion. Uh, I don't think Legion, uh, Legion's recent buffs help them all that much. Um, they're essentially the same killer for the first week, uh, if even. You were getting a few 5 hit downs in Frenzy, but once everyone's really got the memo, uh, that Legion can now do that, uh, you never get it anymore. Uh, and realistically, the only buff that Legion kind of got was um, the three second fatigue. Uh, if anything, he actually got slightly nerfed because by adding the five hit frenzy, uh, you basically just encourage people to split up against Legion even more. And with more people doing that, now your power is even more useless. Uh, there's the recent sort of craze about Forever Legion with uh, Fanatophobia and all. It's basically the exact same as pre-update. Um, you know, a 90 second gen with one stack of Fanatophobia is 94.5 seconds. An 80 second gen with one stack of Fanatophobia was 84 seconds. It's an extra half a second. Um, even four stacks of Fanatophobia, I mean, you can heal. There's body knowledge, there's circle of healing, there's med kits, there's so much stuff. If you're facing Forever Legion so much, Throw on desperate measures, throw on resilience. Uh, by using resilience, you can basically negate two stacks of Thanatophobia. Um, and I feel like, you know, people are sitting there complaining where, when there's a lot of stuff they can do to sort of counter this. Uh, starting C tier is Hillbilly, uh, another killer that sort of feels like they just get worse with every patch. Um, Hillbilly really didn't benefit at all from any of the changes except the 10 seconds longer gens, as did every killer. Um, but, you know, uh, good survivors against the Hellblade. You know, he's been in the game for since basically its inception. Everyone knows how to play, play against Hellblade at this rate. It's very rare nowadays that you find a survivor that won't anticipate a curve or that, you know, will get caught in a dead zone against the Hellblade or anything like that. Uh, so, not just was he nerfed and maps keep getting worse for him, but generally survivors just keep getting better and better at countering this killer and he, he just does not feel good to play anymore. Even a good hillbilly, you're not really rewarded for your skill because, you know, the more you curve and all that, the riskier you're playing. And you're just going to end up losing all your gens uh, while landing maybe two or three curves in a match. So if that's what you're going for, that's fine, but this tier this is based off the ability to get four kills. Yeah, next is Gooseface, who also recently received a bit of a buff. Um, he honestly feels a little bit weaker. Uh, I think the, the way they changed his reveal mechanic... Um, he just feels terrible to play now. I played him a bit after the update because I kind of I liked Ghostface before the update. I was excited and I played him a bit. Uh, but the more I played him, the more I just kept getting revealed behind walls or revealed around corners. Uh, and I just don't like playing him anymore. Um, he really doesn't have much going for him anymore because it's just so hard not to get revealed in a chase. If you're trying to mark someone, they can literally reveal you an accident. They might not even see you, but they might just reveal you. Um, and it really sucks. Uh, he can still insta down. He can catch you off guard. He can hide his red stain. But at the end of the day, uh, fast gens, good libbers will basically just shangles these. 
Next is Deathslinger, uh, always sitting around the bottom of C tier ever since his nerf. Uh, he does kind of counter New Dead Hard, but that's not really a huge thing because New Dead Hard is not as common now. It's not as much of an issue, so uh, that's for not really any reason to move him up. His nerf still greatly affected him. He he's not he's got probably the lowest mobility in the game. He's very slow. Um, everything he does slows him down. And he, he's just very inefficient with his time. I think now, even if you're a good death slinger and you're playing well, uh, the time and efficiency of constantly having to reel in, hit and reload uh, should just buy the survivors enough time to do all the gents. Uh, next is Doctor, who does feel quite nice after this update. I feel like uh, Doctor with the dead hard nerf and brutal strength, uh, plus the pallet buff, uh, does feel really nice to play because... Uh, Pre-dropping pallets against Doctor is quite a good strategy, uh, but with the brutal strength and the increased pallet times, you really punish people for doing that and can turn the map into a dead zone quite fast. Um, you know, additionally, the dead hard nerf, not being able to dead hard Doctor anymore, is r much better for him than you might seem. Uh, I played a few matches of him and he does feel quite strong. Uh, now, obviously, he's not much better than before, and the counterplay you can use against him is still better. But there's definitely a lot less options and you are more punished uh, for just trying to pre-draw pallets against them. And this is the Cannibal, or Leatherface. Um, once again, hasn't really changed much in its position. Uh, the usual stuff, it's very easy to loop him. Windows kind of destroys power. He doesn't have any mobility. If survivors split up, you've got no snowball. If you try to camp, uh, good survivors will punish you for it. Uh, and that's about it. You know, there's really not much to say about the Cannibal. Uh, next is Pinhead, who might seem quite low, but I feel like the more I play Pinhead, uh, the more I sort of think he's a bit weaker. Um, he's a very hard killer to play for a start. You know, landing that cheating and chase is very difficult. Um, the problem I have with Pinhead is that in a chase, I will hit survivors with my chain about six or seven times and barely ever get rewarded with a hit. I'll be chasing an injured survivor and I will chain them about four times and none of them will even result in a hit. And I think that's kind of ridiculous because <laughs> they get so hard to land and you land it over and over and over and the survivors just keep breaking out the chains, breaking out the chains, dropping the pallet, moving to the next loop. Um, you know, that and the chain hunt is completely cancelled by just picking up the box. Someone just has to go every 90 seconds and just grab the box. They don't have to solve it, they just have to grab it. Um, and if a chain hunt's active, you know, they go, oh shit, chain hunt just started. Uh, they can just go pick up the box. Like, nothing stop. Like, realistically, you should just never get chain hunt. That's what I always said. And that's, you know, what happens in reality. You never get chain hunts unless you actually just find the box. Um, he's not terrible, but I, I do feel like he is way too hard to play uh, for how strong he actually is. Uh, next is Trickster, who is not, like, I kind of fluctuate with Trickster. Sometimes I think he's um, a lot better than he actually is, and sometimes I, I think he's a lot worse than he actually is. At the minute I have him here at the top of C tier, that could change in the future. Uh, but I do have some really bad games with Trickster sometimes. Uh, he's still such a difficult killer to play. He's still the hardest killer to play on console, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of maps and a lot of tiles, even in the maps I said, uh, would be sort of basing this terrorist off. There are just so many tiles that Trickster just can't do anything at. E even Killer Shack, you can loop a Trickster and Killer Shack for like a solid minute. It's just crazy how bad his power is at some loops. Um, he can still defend hooks well. He can uh, shred people out in the open. And, you know, if he can fire over a loop, uh, it's still a really good, uh, you know, it's a really good position for him. He can down you fast. But there are a lot of places where you can be looped for such a long time as Trickster, and it just feels so painful. It's starting to beat here is Demogorgon. He's always been a bit of a mid-tier killer. Uh, fairly balanced, you know. And he doesn't have much going for him. The Shred is a decent tool to use in Chias. Um, but overall, uh, you shouldn't have too hard of a time looping at Demogorgon for a reasonable amount of time. There's no real reason you should go down uh, really fast to him. He does have an insta-down. He doesn't really have a really fast catch-up mechanic. Even with Save the Best for Last, you can still make another loop. And his portals just feel kind of useless since you have to preset them. 
and they're just such a huge time investment that most of the time it's not even worth it. Next might be a surprise to a lot of people, but it's going to be Clown. I feel like after this update, Clown is a bit of a sleeper pick. Uh, the reason being, um, you get no distance for doing anything against a Clown. Uh, most of the time spent in a chase is through dropping pallets, uh, killer breaks it, you move to the next loop, they catch up, killer hits you, you run to the next loop, you know, they're catching up, they're spending a lot of time catching up. Um, and you spend a lot of time getting the pallets down. Clown really just shuts a lot of that down, especially with the new update. If you use uh, Save the Best for Last and Brutal Strength, uh, with Ether 15% and Flask of Bleach, uh, you're honestly kind of busted. Uh, survivors will kind of learn to hate Clown after this update, because I've been playing him a lot, and I've yet to lose a game. Uh, you just throw a ball at a loop, you get the pallet down super fast, you throw a ball at the pallet, you break the pallet super fast with brutal strength, the survivor is gassed for like 4 seconds, and they get absolutely no distance from it. And you're able to either hit them, or you will be able to get an, an, another pallet immediately. And when you hit them, if you gas them and then hit them, with save the best for last 8 stacks, they gain like 5 meters of distance. It's actually insane. And you, you can down people in like 15 seconds with Clown. Even if they drop a pallet. Just with like, you know, max stacks, who's the best list, and these add-ons. Uh, it's really crazy. Um, he's kill switched at the moment for a bug. Uh, but I, I genuinely think with these add-ons, Clown is really good. Because you can just get pallets so fast. you can People can't hold W against you because you can slow them down. Uh, they can't save pallets, you know. They can't really play Windows very well. Uh, they can't, you know, play distance, you just completely shut down everything the survivors can do. Uh, you still don't have mobility, uh, which which isn't great, and you can't, uh, if the survivors in the right spot, you can't really down them super fast. Uh, you know, if they got like Killer Shack and a jungle gem or something next to it, uh, you, you can't really down them super fast there. But even then, you can still just get rid of the, uh, the resources in the map super fast. And you can be really time efficient with Clown. So I actually genuinely think he's at least B tier now. Uh, next is Twins. They're, they're okay. They, they haven't really changed much uh, over the past few months. Uh, healing perks have become even better now, which isn't very good for them. You know, with the bottom in knowledge buff. Uh, you know, less people running. Uh, stuff like that. I guess the dead hard nerf is actually pretty good against Twins. Uh, it's, it's still, you know, they still get hurt by that a lot. Uh, other than that, you know, they're, they're basically the same, so there's not really much to say about Twins. Uh, same with Hag. Some people might think I put them a bit low here, uh, but Hag really isn't all that good. I never thought Hag was that good. You know, if you're against a good team that, once again, know how to play against Hag, and they should by now, uh, you will have a really bad time. I mean, one of Ostarvis' recent videos, he played a high game and got absolutely shit on because he was against four survivors that knew how to play against Hag. And even through in the end game, I wish he was going to allow him to get four kills, but they just used Unbreakable, which will definitely happen in your lobbies as well. If the survivors decide to throw or you get lucky, uh, they will usually have the perks to just get them back out of that situation. Uh, next is the Dredge, which is our newest killer. Uh, my first impressions of Dredge were a low beat here. Uh, my next impressions of Dredge were A tier, and now they've sort of brought back down a bit to the mid B tier. I just feel like he's very map dependent. Um, even on something like Iron Mouse or Cold Tower, he's still not great because there's just some locker dead zones. There's just some areas where there's absolutely zero lockers. Um, and obviously, you know, locking lockers is still a huge problem. They need to be fixed. Um, uh, he, he could be much better with a few buffs. Uh, but he also has some very strong add-ons that, uh, you know, keep him higher in this tier list. So overall, I think Dredge isn't a bad killer, uh, but sometimes he can feel pretty weak. Next is another bit, uh, bit of a surprise, but I'm going to put Wraith at the top of B tier. Um, I have played probably 30 games of Wraith since the update, and I have yet to even come close to losing one of them. And I've been against a lot of good survivors even playing this. Because I've just been using Thanatophobia, Pain Resonance, Floods of Rage, and Make Your Choice. And I 
I'm just shitting on everyone. It's basically impossible to avoid Wraith with Floods of Rage and make your choice. And with the faster pallet breaking speed, at the less distance on the hits to 10 seconds longer gens, combined with Thana and Pain Resonance, you, you definitely have enough time to sort of uh, manipulate the make your choice hits in order to kill people off early. It's really, really good, and I've still, like I said, yet to lose a game using this build. Um, you might think I'm putting him too high, but Wraith feels so strong at the minute, and I don't know why. And actually, at the top of B tier is Spirit. Uh, I think Spirit with your average add-ons will sit here. Um, a lot of people still say Spirit's S tier, a lot of people put her A tier. And that's because they either use or go against nothing but Mother Daughter Ring and Cherry Blossom. Um, which is fair enough. I mean, ever since Spirit got nerfed, all they've been using is a uh, Mother Daughter Ring and stuff to compensate for the uh, for the nerf. Uh, which might you know might make people think Spirit's stronger than she actually is. But I assure you, Spirit with no add-ons or yellow add-ons or something like that um, really isn't that good. Uh, she's very time inefficient. She's punished so heavily for missing a phase. Uh, you know, you can't really go around using your face from ability that much because, you know, you don't have the recharge add-ons and stuff anymore. Um, good survivors can definitely outplay you a lot of the time since they can hear you in the face now. Uh, I don't think she's bad, but she is nowhere near as strong as she used to be. And starting the ad here is Artist. Um, once again, I think Artist is a killer that people put maybe a bit too high, but I think for now I will put her in the ad here because she does a very strong anti loop. Uh, and she has the unique ability to pressure survivors completely across the map while you're chasing someone else, uh, which is really strong. You know, like that should have be underestimated. Uh, the problem with Aris is that the counterplay to her ability works really well against her. You know, if she puts a crew down a loop, just leave it. She loses enough distance uh, in order to get to another one. Uh, she doesn't have a very good snowball. You can't. You can't really die really fast to an artist you know the fastest an artist is going to down you is maybe like 30 seconds if you play it right um and you should be able to loop her for like a good minute if, if not even longer uh once again if you play it right uh which in my opinion gives the survivor uh, good survivors enough time to uh to do other gens uh, without uh suffering you know too much damage uh compared to some other killers she definitely is a lot better, but I think the killers above her uh, just have a lot more potential uh, to uh, snowball against a good team, which is kind of what you need. If you don't have that snowball potential, uh, usually survivors will beat you in a game of attrition. Uh, next is Plague, who is a little bit better in this update with the uh, Um I think Plague with Thanaophobia and the 90 second gens um, does buy herself enough time in order to chase all four survivors um, as an M1 killer if they don't decide to cleanse. That being said, you can throw on an apple add-on and now you have two crop purges, you know, you can get everyone infected, pop a crop purge, potentially down like two, maybe three people, get a lot of pressure going and then later on use another one. Uh, so I think Plague is decently strong at the minute, uh, but a good coordinated team uh, can sort of play around your corrupt purge as long as maybe only one guy goes down and then they just don't cleanse and now you have no corrupt fountains. Uh, good survivors can easily be a plague if she has no corrupt fountains available because they will just play the whole game injured. They can do that. Uh, so, you know, plague uh, definitely requires a lot of coordination to beat, uh, but when survivors have that coordination, it's definitely possible. And uh, next is Nemesis, who might be a little bit high for some people, but I don't know what it is about Nemesis in the recent th uh, few months, but he just feels really strong. Uh, a tier 3 Nemesis is actually godlike. He, he feels like one of those killers which you can play to a surgical degree and uh, do really well. It's not that hard to mess up with Nemesis, and when you don't mess up, he's really strong in chase. Uh, you basically just throw on Corrupt, uh, spend the first like, you know two minutes of the game infecting some people, maybe getting a hook, uh, or something like that, you know, making, you know, getting into tier 2, maybe even tier 3, and once you do that, it's just all downhill from the survivors from there, because if a tier 3 nemesis catches you, and you're already infected, you're, you're going down in like 30, maybe 40 seconds, 
uh, if you're lucky. Because he's just so strong. He can hit. If he's within six meters, he can basically injure you. And if you drop a pallet, he's going to immediately destroy the pallet. And you're going to get like no distance for it. You know, I think Nemesis is actually really good. Um, the problem is the zombies. Sometimes they're completely useless. Sometimes they're decent. And sometimes they even screw you over because they might body block you. Uh, but even then, Nemesis just feels really strong. I don't know what it is about him, but uh, I am able to consistently down survivors really fast with this character. Uh, next is Hunters. Uh, Hunters has always been a solid killer. Uh, she definitely got a slight buff with the uh, Dredge uh, released and added more lockers to the map, as well as the recent Lethal Pursuer buff is really good for her. Um, she's always just been solid, you know, a really good hunter just will beat most teams, and she definitely has a snowball potential uh, that a lot of the killers below her don't have, uh, but there are still some, you know, really bad maps for her, uh, really bad tiles, uh, and you do need to be playing, you know, on your A game uh, if you want to win as hunters. Uh, next is a position that's changed, it's Oni. Um, I usually put Oni as third best, um, but I feel like their recent patch uh, didn't help Oni as much as it did with most killers. Um, I saw a video from Hence, he said Oni benefits hugely, and I, I sort of disagreed with him, but then people seem to disagree with me. I don't see how Oni benefits from any of these changes. Um, breaking pallets 10% temper, faster as a, as a regular basic attack, 4.6 killer, isn't going to make the difference between a survivor making another loop and not. Survivors have more than enough time to make it to another loop after you break a pallet. Uh, 10% didn't change that. Uh, the 10% faster cooldown does not matter because as only you don't commit to basic attack chases. You land one hit and usually you drop or you know you just sort of chase them for a bit to get some blood out of them. But you don't chase them with the intention of downing them. Or at least you shouldn't against a good survivor. As only if I'm against four good survivors, I never chase them without my power with the um, intention or the expectation of downing them. Uh, so none of these changes really affect them. Uh, the perk nerfs didn't really affect them on the killer side. Um, the survivor perk nerfs didn't really affect them either. Because dead hard, all dead hard against Oni uh, wasn't huge. Uh, it's just as useful. It didn't really get nerfed versus Oni, uh, but it really was a huge deal for him anyway. Uh, but stuff like um, the off the record buff, uh, we're gonna live forever buff, uh, really did, and even Bonnie knowledge, uh, definitely hurt Oni uh, more than a lot of killers. That being said, he's still really good. Uh, he's still basically just as good as he was before. Um, but I just think that the uh, changes that were made uh, helped the killers above uh, more than they helped him. And ending the A tier as the third best killer in the game, I think at the minute, is the Executioner. Uh, just because he, this is based off of, you know, wanting, you know, to get a 4k. And if you want to get four kills as the Executioner, uh, nothing is really stopping you. Uh, if the survivors aren't really, really good, um, there's nothing stopping you from, you know, throwing on Lethal Pursuer, finding a guy really fast, having him down in the first, like, 40, 50 seconds of the game. Uh, hooking him, tunneling him off hook, turn, uh, caging him, tunneling out of the cage, and having a guy dead in the first three minutes of the game. Uh, combined with perks like corrupt, deadlock, stuff like that to slow the gens, um, you can genuinely have people dead at three gens consistently if you really want to. Um, and that's really strong. Uh, he, he's one of those killers that can just really snowball out of control. Uh, you know, he maybe you get a double hit, and on hook, uh, maybe you get someone caged at a bad spot. Uh, just these little things against the executioner can really just make a team crumble. Uh, which, like I said, you know, a lot of killers below him don't really have. Uh, there's still some counters. Uh, the punishment of the damned sometimes can feel really bad to use. Um, a lot of the times you're hit through walls. Uh, good survivors can definitely react and dodge them. Uh, but if you do play him perfectly and your decision making is on point. Combined with a little bit of good luck, uh, you should be able to win most games. And a new entry into the S tier is Blight. Uh, I think the recent buffs and shit they got, the changes, um, have maybe boosted Blight up to the S tier. Um, now I think uh, a really good Blight that wants to win, you know, maybe with some good add-ons, good perks, um, is S tier worthy. Uh, just because of, you know, the DS nerf, you can really just shit on people with Blight, even if they have DS, you can eat through off the record, stuff like that. Uh, the 10 seconds longer chance, uh, you know, they obviously help Blight quite a lot. Uh, the, the perk nerfs did hurt him, you know, Rune being completely useless now. 
uh, pain resistance to bands also you know uh, doesn't synergize any more pop being nerfed which was always good for blight uh, but there's still good new things like lethal pursuer was already good and now it's really good with compound 21 uh, so yeah i do think blight is now probably an s-tier killer and you know just just he's still a fair bit blue nurse uh, but he's definitely leagues above the rest of the killers uh, and the best killer in the game is still nurse uh, obviously nothing to say you know double wrench nurse definitely needs to be looked at um but you know uh, th there's not really anything to say about nurse she's always the best she always will be in my opinion unless they do some major nurse to her without touching blight um i think she's just gonna stay at the top uh, so that's my killer tier list as of this patch um i'm satisfied enough with it Th there were some controversial things like i think a lot of people are going to talk about um wraith being so high clown being so high uh, maybe spirit being too low stuff like maybe even nemesis being too high i think pe some people might say that uh, but th this can definitely change i do change my tier list quite a lot uh this is just my opinions as of right now they could change and they probably will uh, so yeah uh, thanks for watching